What's happening, Pip? It's time to leave. Right, you know I get. I think he could win this one. And I know for an absolute fact that he will do everything he can for as long as it takes so he does win. It wouldn't surprise me if Dick changed the policy of the government on population. Well, it's when the projections came out about how Australia's population over the next 40 years was going to go from 22 million to, to 36. He went on, this is in October, on the 730 report and said, I actually believe in a big Australia. I make no apology for that. I actually think it's good news that our population is growing. When that didn't go down too well, he went on the 730 report again at the end of January and said... Uh, I don't have a view on that, to be quite honest. This is simply the reality we are now dealing with. But, but Look, I just can't believe that he's our Prime Minister and he's saying he doesn't have a view on it, 36 million. At least I think it's a, it's a move forward because a few months before he was saying that he supported a big Australia of 36 million. Now he's telling us he doesn't have a view on it. Well, maybe we, the people who vote, can give him a view. Dick Smith needs no introduction, does he? He's here next for student press call and he's going to be questioned this morning, not by me, by students from Redeemer Lutheran College at uh, Rochdale. Do you think, though, that we should just be taking a national approach to these issues or would a global approach to finding solutions to these issues be more beneficial? Oh, I think we certainly should take a global approach because I've been able to fly around the world five times at low levels in my helicopters and planes and see the effect that we've had. And common sense says, we've got too many people on this world. If we can just have slightly less people, we'll probably be able to live for thousands of years. But the rate we're going, another hundred years' time, we're going to be in problems. Wonderful question. Those kids raised an important point. Thank you. Australia can't simply ignore the rest of the world when it comes to population. It seems to me they've given it more thought than our politicians. The Federal Finance Minister, Lindsay Tanner, has scoffed at the suggestion that Australia is overpopulated. In a speech in Melbourne today, Mr Tanner said other countries would laugh if Australians mounted that argument as an excuse for clamping down on immigration. The argument that Australia is already overpopulated is simply nonsense. Bangladesh is roughly twice the physical size of Tasmania, but home to about seven times the population of Australia. If Australia seeks to persuade the rest of the world that we are overpopulated, we would rightly be laughed at. I wonder if Lindsay Tara has ever been to Bangladesh. Is he arguing Australia has to look like this before we can have a say about our own population levels? Bangladesh has 160 million people, the most densely populated major country on Earth. Hello. Can I come in? Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Everyone's asleep. Oh, you've got television. Yeah. Yes. In this slum in Dhaka, 250,000 people are packed into an area of just one square kilometre. So this is about three metres by four metres, and five people live here. Five family. Five. Every family. This is mother? Mother. It would be much worse if Bangladesh hadn't made heroic efforts to curb its population growth. Mr Tanner might be surprised to learn that Australia is currently growing even faster than here. Australia needs to set itself as an example as well of how to deal with population issues. In this ward, everybody gets mixed, you know, yes. adults and children. But... For 18 years, Australian Dr Kim Stretfield has been living here and studying the connections between population and health. Every summer, 
the grounds of his research centre in Dhaka become an emergency clinic, treating a thousand patients a day for severe diarrhoea. There is not enough water. We're uh, in Dhaka. The reason you're seeing so many people here today is that we are at the bottom of the Dhaka water table, the upper water table. It's been dropping at three metres a year. There's no way that can recharge during the monsoon. With this kind of infrastructure population on, living on top of the aquifer, there's no way we can recharge the aquifer. This is a very serious shortage that we're, we're facing. Despite the acute situation, every year, this centre and others like it are losing their best trained doctors, nurses and computer specialists to countries like Australia. Kim, have you lost any staff when it comes to people heading off overseas to I have, Greener right? Field? I lost my office manager and uh, last week and three computer programmers to Canada within the last uh, 18 months or so. And this centre loses staff at the rate probably of 100 a year. It's just happening every week, every week and it's immoral. As a rich country, Australia can't ignore the population problems elsewhere. But we're not helping by plundering poorer nations of the people they can least afford to lose. Last year, two thirds of Australia's doctors and nurses were recruited from the world's poorest nations. And why are we looking to the developing world to fill gaps in our workforce? Because it's a hell of a lot easier and cheaper than training our own people. The problem with trying to solve skill shortages by just turning on the immigration tap and bringing in the people we need is that you create a disincentive for employers to do what they should be doing, which is training enough Australians. They don't train enough Australians because they know all they have to do is run to the government and say, let in some more skilled people. We do it the easiest way we can. And if you can, the cheapest way, and if you can simply bring someone in as a skilled immigrant, not do any of the training, it's the best way to go. A recent government report showed that we have something like four million people functionally illiterate. They could be trained. It's hard work to train them, but there's plenty of people here. It's nothing short of a national disgrace that so many Australians are not receiving the skills they need to find meaningful work in our modern economy. People like I met at this adult literacy class. OK, does anybody know what a search engine is? For one reason or another, millions of Australians are falling through the cracks in our education system. Now, how old are you now? 32. You're 32, and how old was it when you left school? What, about 13 or 14? I didn't go to school, did you? You didn't really go to school? No. I went in one door and straight back out the other. I came here as a bride. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't study English. This is the first time here. When I first came here, I found it like it was really, really difficult for me. Sometimes I started like crying. I couldn't understand anything. What I'd like to see is Australian business concentrating on training people uh, increasing the skills of our own workforce before just lazily taking people from overseas. And would you like to learn more skills? Yes. 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 <laughs> Unanimous. And, and like to get a better job? Yes. yes. Or in some cases, a job at all. Yes. And I think I mentioned to you, I had a speech defect when I was eight years of age, but I did OK. You speak very well now. <laughs> Bit of practice. Uh, people say I speak too much. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> It disappoints me that big business and the government can just throw away so many local people while they pursue their dream for a big Australia. 